Hello, my fellow believers. It's Redemptor once again with another interesting video. As I told you on my previous videos, I am not a preacher, neither do I intend to be one in the future. On this channel, I do commentary videos commenting on different topics concerning Christianity and most importantly, the salvation by the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a channel where you get to hear what many preachers won't tell you the truth of the gospel. We are all ambassadors in Christ and our work is to share the truth of the gospel to the world and to the non-believers. The guy in this video is an African from Kenya in East Africa. He is known for his firm beliefs on how the whites have colonized the Africans even in their way of worship. He believes that if it were not for the influence of the whites who came to Africa as missionaries, then the Africans way of worship and understanding of the Bible would be different. He points out some facts that makes Christianity questionable, yet he himself is a Christian. Let's see why he claims that churches are personal buildings pausing in the name of House of God. And in my view, it is very important, particularly in Africa. Today, when I travel across the continent, and I do, in many countries, I am amazed by the number of buildings whose owners claim are churches. In a distance of one kilometer, you will see different denominations. The Bible is now the greatest instrument in creating false industries in the continent of Africa. And that is not to be celebrated. It is to be frowned upon. And we who claim to be Christians, and I normally use this very deliberately, we claim to be Christians. As to whether we are is another debate. We'll only discover that a little later when we are in heaven. And therefore, when we talk about rediscovering, we are saying that it was once discovered. But let us situate the Bible in its proper place. Christianity as we know it today in the continent of Africa, was midwifed to us in the continent through Europe, through the missionaries. When they came, they were reading the very same Bible that we are reading today. When they sat in Berlin and were dividing the continent of Africa, they were reading the same Bible that we are reading today. The same Bible in which in Paul's letter to the Galatians at chapter 3, 28, he says, there are no Jews, no Gentiles, no slave, no free, no woman, no man. They read that verse. It was not interpolated later after they came. They read it. But they came here and conquered us. They came here and discriminated against us. The same Bible. They were being mentored by that very same Bible. They came here when they had divided the body of Christ. The English had appropriated the religion in 1534 and they now had their Anglican church complete with the monarch as its head. The Scots had appropriated their own and they had the Presbyterian church. The Greeks had their Greek Orthodox. The Armenians 
the Armenian Orthodox. The Roman Catholics were even bolder. They called it the Roman Catholic Church. So that even when they are in Uganda, it's not Ugandan Catholic Church, it is the Roman Catholic Church. And you are going there and you are saying you are Roman Catholic Church. In apartheid South Africa, they are the Dutch Reformed Church, which became the foundation stone upon which apartheid was articulated in 1948 by Hendrik Fafut and his cohorts. I was listening to this man from my land and I could see wisdom flowing through his mouth. In the presence of so many preachers, he pointed out that churches are buildings owned by people. In short, he meant that pastors have turned the gospel to a business. He even called churches and an industry, which I don't think is far from the truth because that is exactly what we are witnessing in many churches. So the Bible has been misused. Don't be cheated. Let's not be nice to each other because we are Christians. The Bible has been misused. It has been used to support slavery. It has been used to support colonization. It has been used to pervert the truth. That is the Bible that we are saying we ought to rediscover. So when we are gathered here as Christians and we are talking about rediscovery of mentorship in the Bible, we must have a spirit that is a questioning spirit. When his grace was um, preaching to us, he said, we must always be nice before we are good. Not always. And I've always talked about two pro approaches to be found in the Bible. One is of John the Baptist and Herodias. It's a dangerous path. Where you go out into the public and condemn evil. The only thing that you must know is that when you follow that path, Salome will ask for your head. But there are circumstances when it is necessary. Then there are circumstances when it is necessary to follow the path that his grace has suggested. Read the conversation between Nathan and David and what he did to the wife of prophet Uriah. He comes and tells him, in this place there was a person who had a lamb. Circumstances define which method you use. And in a forum such as this, we now live in a world where as Christians we are also very pretentious. We don't speak the truth as it ought to be spoken. What makes it even more worse in this Christianity religion is the fact that every preacher wants to be relevant in their own way. Every denomination have their beliefs and practices, which I find strange because I am a strong believer of the word of God and therefore I don't understand where the difference comes in because we all read the same Bible. The scriptures are divinely inspired, brothers and sisters. Therefore, God is not the author of confusion. That's right. I want to work on both and balance it. Mm -hmm. I want first the book of Corinthians. First in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I want everybody to follow me. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and at verse 33. Yes. For God, For God is not the author of confusion. But what? But of peace as in all churches of the saints. All right, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, and to my viewing audience that are watching all around the world, including my enemies. Amen. God is not the author of confusion, so why are we so confused? That's right. <laughs> are you listening? God is not the author. God is not the originator. God is not responsible for confusion. So why are we so confused? That's right. The reason why religion is so confused today 
is because men have took matters in their own hands starting religion. I want everyone to listen at me well. God Almighty told the whole world what to be. That's right. That's right. Didn't he say so? In the book of Leviticus. Notice the 19th chapter of the book of Leviticus. I want everybody here to listen. I want everyone that are watching around the world to listen because many people have wrote me and said, you think it ain't nobody to write but you. You're mighty narrow-minded. That's right. No, I believe that no one is right but God. That's right. And long as I give you the information of God, I'm going to stay right and that's going to keep me right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to deviate at all. Many people say, well, Pastor Dennis, my spirit don't agree with you. Okay, tarry for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's right. I don't care nothing about your spirit. That's right. Your spirit don't mean nothing to me. No. The spirit that I recognize is the spirit of God himself. That's right. The Holy Ghost don't fight the Holy Word. That's right. Huh? Eh? That's right. Now, if you got the right spirit, if you got the right spirit, if you got God in you, that God in you will not fight God's word. Amen. Am I right, I said? Amen. What do you mean? Whatever the word of God say, even if it hurts me, I have to say amen. I have to say amen to what is true. So I question the so-called saved community, the so-called Christian community that cuss the scriptures, speak ill of the scriptures, blaspheme the scriptures, and even go as far as telling us Europeans wrote the scriptures. That's right. This book here does not confuse the understanding ones. No. This book is confusing to those that are unlearned, taught wrong, misled, tricked, deceived, duped, conned, manipulated, all by the power of Satan. That's right. God told the whole world mm -hmm. what he is. That's right and then told the whole world what he want you to be. In the book of Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19, and beginning starting at verse, at verse one, 1. Listen. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Geno Genin spake to Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses. This is not Geno Genin's church. No. This is not Geno Genin's ministry. No, no. This ain't Geno Genin's nothing. That's right. That's right. All I am is a servant and a student and a messenger of the Most High. Amen. I don't have the know-how to formulate such a teaching like this. No way. It's too deep, too broad, too strict, That's right. and too hard. That's right. I would try to take a short way out. Don't do this. Never mind that. In fact, if it was left to us, we wouldn't have a Bible. Some folks say, well, Pastor Jenny, live up to me. I changed that scripture. I changed that scripture. Well, why be choicy? <laughs> the problem we have as Christians is these many denominations where we find pastors and teachers of the word who want to use the word of God for their own benefit. A preacher wants to preach what he wants his followers to hear, but not what is expected of them. A preacher is supposed to preach the gospel to the world to bring many to the knowledge of the truth. What we are seeing on our screens is totally different from what is in the Bible. God told us what to be, Norfolk. And the Lord spake unto, unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and, what? and say unto them, Ye shall be holy. Ye shall be Methodist. Ye shall be holy. Pentecostal. Holy. Apostolic. Holy. Non-denominational. Holy. Lutheran. Holy. Presbyterian. Holy. Muslim. Holy. Mormon. Holy. Hebrew Israelite. Holy. Amen. Jehovah Witnesses. Ye shall be holy. This is where the confusion come in. God told.
told you what to be, and then he gave you the reason. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. What did the Lord say, William? I, the, what, get, get, all, get all of it. Speak unto, and the Lord spake unto Moses. And the Lord saying, spake to Moses. Speak unto all the congregation speak of the children of Israel. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel. And say unto them. Tell them, Moses. Ye shall be holy. Ye shall be holy. For I, the Lord your God, I, the Lord your God, am holy. To all of my apostolic, Pentecostal, Baptist, non-denominational, Muslim, Mormon, and everything else that may be visiting. Right. Ask yourself. Right. Why are you loyal? and dedicated to a religion that nobody in here was. That's right. Nobody in your Bible That's right. was a Baptist, was a Methodist, was a Presbyterian, was a Catholic, was a Lutheran, was a non-denominational, was a Mormon. Nobody in your Bible professed to be apostolic, Pentecostal. So why are you so loyal? The reason I am suggesting a meeting between PLO Lumumba and Pastor Gino Jennings is because for years Pastor Gino Jennings has stood against religion and tries his best to teach from the Bible not for his own benefit but for the enlightenment of the people of God. The truth is that a joint effort between these two can try and bring Christians back to their senses. The Bible has only one interpretation on every chapter and verse. Why is it that every preacher wants to give their own interpretations? Kindly, let's share this video. To reach to Pastor Gino Jennings, I would wish to see this meeting happen one day thank you for your company and for your support i don't take it for granted i really appreciate you if it is your first time coming across our channel kindly consider subscribing press the notification bell so you will be notified once we upload a new video please remember to give our videos a thumbs up i love you so much guys bye bye for now and see you on the next one shalom